Hello, Clint McDonald back with another Visual Basic tutorial. We're going to continue the drag and drop database binding series that I've got going so far. And today we're going to continue where we left off in the previous video. So if you've missed the previous video, go back and watch that one first. So what we're going to look at here <coughs> is we're going to look at continuing. This is exactly what we had last time. We're going to look at adding the database project data source one more time. Um, the six main things that were created, the XSD file and how to quickly change uh, information you get through filtering, filtering and sorting. So today we're going to add to that and use relationships, um, adding a second project data source. We're going to use multiple tables within an XSD file relating tables through the use of parameters and we're going to quickly bind to a data grid view just to see, see that, how that happens. So where we left off last time is we had created a combo box and we had done a drag and drop creating our data set, our binding source, table adapter, our XSD file, our connection string in the project settings, as well as in the code behind file, a quick fill method to put in the database uh, table information into the combo box. And then we had actually altered the SQL statement to sort the list backwards uh, alphabetically. So we created a second fill method in order to do that. So now let's look at going a little further with this. So we're gonna quickly add a data grid view to the form here. So we'll grab a data grid view here and we'll just grab it on here. Now we're not gonna configure columns and all that. If you wanna learn how to do that, there's a tutorials earlier in the series that you can get that from. We're just gonna do the data mining for now. Customizing columns and all that are, is for another day. So essentially what we're gonna do here is we're gonna bind the products in our database to this data grid view. So if I go ahead to the smart tag and say choose data source, we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, well we don't have a products binding source here. So your first instinct would be to say, okay, let's add another data source. But we don't want to do that. The reason why we don't want to do that is because the products table and the categories table are actually related to each other. So in the products table, there's a category ID field as a foreign key that relates the two. If we create a new data source, what it's like is drawing one table on one piece of paper, on one piece of paper and the other table on another piece of paper, and then trying to draw a line between them when you have two different pieces of paper. And you can't do that. So what we want to do is we actually want both tables on the same piece of paper so that we can easily draw that relationship diagram between them so they can actually talk to each other. And so what we're going to do is rather than adding a new project data source here, what we're in fact going to do is cancel out of that, open up our data set XSD file, and we can go ahead and add additional table adapters and additional table binding sources within the same XSD file. So if we go into the blank area here, right click and say add new table adapter, what we have is the ability to go ahead and create new SQL commands against different tables. So the first thing that comes up is, okay, what are we connecting to? So we've already got in my settings, we've already got a connection string set up so we're going to use that same connection string and then we're going to go ahead and say what command type it is again in the future you'll be using stored procedures and commercial software but uh, for learning purposes we're using sql statements for now <coughs> then what data should be loaded into the table now again i know sql fairly well so i could type this out but i can't remember all the fields and exactly how they're spelled and their capitalization and all the details within the table fields within the particular products table we're looking at. So I'm going to make this easy on myself and just use the query builder. And then in the query builder we're going to bring in the products table. And there we go, we have our products table. And then again, when you create a table adapter for the very first time using a new table, you want your base set of information and columns that you're bringing in to be everything. So again, we're just gonna choose every single column here. I typically just, for personal preference, click them all here and choose them in the order that they're in the table. But you don't have to. I do not recommend, however, using select star from, uh, because later on that will mess up what columns get defined, especially when you're binding to a data grid view. 
So we're going to use select all the fields in the order from products. We're not going to put any sorting, no order by, no where clauses, no filtering, nothing. Just a basic select statement. And then we can say OK. And we're going to leave it at that. We're going to say next at this point. And there's our basic fill and get data methods. And we're just going to leave these. This is our base set for this table, table adapter. Go next. And you can see that it generated select, insert, update, delete statements. It has table mappings and fill and get methods that we use, as well as update methods that the data adapter can use for writing data back to the database. So we'll finish that for now. And you can see really quickly that our table adapter has been added. Uh, again, it looks like a class diagram. It's not technically it's not technically a class diagram, although it looks like one. Um, here's all the fields that we have, and there's the two methods that were created within the table adapter. So within this now, we want to create a way that we only get products for a given category. So if we select a category from the drop-down list, we only see the products within that particular um, within that particular category. So we'll get to that in just a second. But first what we're going to do is we're going to go and look at what happened in the background. So within the background here, what I can do is <coughs> go ahead and set my data source for my grid. And you can see that my product's binding source is still not there. And that's because it's not at the bottom of the page here. So it's, it hasn't been brought into the form. So we're going to have to bring it in. Again, we're not going to add a new project data source. What we're going to do is we're going to go find one that exists. So if you go to other data sources, project data sources, into the data set, you can see now our product's data table is in that data set. So we can choose that as our data source for the data grid and as you can see from the form that came up here uh, it already knows what all the columns are now, again we're not going to rename columns or make it nice we're just going to get it working and so if I go ahead and look at what else that does is in my form view you can see that it also fills that uses the fill method to fill the table adapter to place in the products table data table within the data set DF Halloween. So if I run that, again it'll take a second or two just to get up and going. But once it comes up you'll see that we have our list of categories here. Again remember we sorted them backwards alphabetically. And we have all our products. As you can see from the categories we're getting all of the products not just the products from the specific category that we want. And that's because we're just using the generic fill method which gets all the products. So let's stop this project and let's make that small change. So within the XSD file what we're going to want to do is go into the table adapter and add a new query. So in other words we're creating new f a new fill method that we can use. We're using SQL statements for now. Again we want to return multiple rows so we're going to select which row return rows. And then we're going to modify our SQL. Again, you can use a query builder if you want to. Uh, I am just going to type it in myself. It's easier. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say where category ID equals at category. Okay. And so at category is a parameter within the SQL, like a variable type of a thing. And I can feed that parameter into the SQL statement and be able to filter the products that are returned based on a specific category. So if I go ahead and go next, we're going to fill by, we're going to name our methods. So in this case, we're filling by the category ID. So I'll just copy and paste that down there for our get methods. We'll say next. You can see that we did select, fill, and get get done automatically. In this case, we don't have update, insert, and delete because we're filtering the data, so it doesn't make sense. So then we'll finish that, and you can see our new methods are added to the table adapter. So now when we go back to the form, in the code behind, we can choose the other fill method that we had. And if I just do that like we did before, you can see that I get an error message. Because the SQL statement had a parameter in it, we need to provide that parameter to the fill method in order for it to implement the value into the parameter to run the SQL statement. So within the parameters of the fill by method here, we want to add the category what the IntelliSense is doing. 
Now in this particular case, we want to bring it from the combo box. So we're going to say me.combobox1 dot selected value. If you remember from last tutorial, we used selected value to store the primary key, which is the foreign key relationship we have. So the selected value will store, uh, will have the right relative information that we want. If you think about what we're doing here, if you look at this form load very quickly, you can see that we're actually filling the products table before we filled the categories table. So we can't actually have a combo box one selected value before we put the categories into it. So we have to use a different method. So if we go into a different event handler, if we say when we change the value in the combo box, then we're going to fill the products table that's going to work much much better for us so you can see here just by spreading out the fill methods at the right appropriate times things will work a lot better there's more to it than this and and we'll get there in the, in the future tutorial but for now we'll run this quickly and see how this works so you can see now there's no products in the table if i change the drop down list then i get the products from the very specific category that i had chosen and that works very well. When I close this, I'm probably going to get an error message. I did, and that's because when you close the project, it, it wipes out the data which which runs the selected index change to event, which we need to handle at this point. So we need to add some error handling and a try catch block, etc. Here, um, but that's for another day. Just to get the binding working and going. That's all we're doing right now. So in this tutorial, we went into the XSD file, we added a second table, we added the table adapter to go through it, we added a parameter based SQL statement to it and created a method which would execute that, which allowed us to, in the code, run that secondary method which required us to have an input variable to, to populate that parameter with such that we can filter our list out and what bound to the um, data grid view here using the products binding source all we're doing is we're choosing to use a different method to fill that binding source with that data set such that we can filter that data appropriately so i know that was quick and dirty um, i would suggest watching that a couple times trying some more on your own but that's the gist of it, and that will give you a basic foundation to get started. Thank you very much.